Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 4 on adding and subtracting fractions. Now, there is hardly anything that you do with fractions that could be more irritating than adding and subtracting them. You know, what we're going to eventually see is multiplying fractions and even dividing fractions is relatively easy. But adding and subtracting fractions for a lot of students is one of the hardest things that they have to do. And let's get into why some fractions are actually relatively easy to add and why others can be real headaches. Let's get into it right now. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the meaning of non-unit fractions. Now, before we do that, it might be smart to talk about what a unit fraction is. A unit fraction is something where there's a one in the numerator. So a unit fraction, right, a unit fraction is something like one half, one third, one seventh, etc. right? And the reason that unit fractions are so important is it's this idea, right, that fractions measure stuff, they measure quantity. So if I took a pizza and I broke it up into seven pieces and I took one of them, I would have taken one seventh of a pizza. Non-unit fractions, right, when there's not a one in the numerator, just literally mean how many of the pieces did I take, right? How many did I take? So let's take a look at exercise number one so we can understand the idea of adding two fractions. Number one, letter A. Consider the fractions two ninths and five ninths. Fill in the blanks of the following. All right, now this is going to seem almost so basic that it boggles the mind, but pause the video for a moment and fill these blanks in with words. All right, so literally this fraction, 2 fraction bar 9, represents 2 ninths, right? 5 fraction bar 9 represents 5 ninths. So in letter B, so it stands to reason that 2 ninths, let me get rid of this little hand there, 2 ninths plus 5 ninths would represent how many ninths or what in fraction form. Try to fill in those two blanks. It should be, I hope, quite easy. All right, so 2 ninths plus 5 ninths should be 7 ninths, right? It should make all the sense in the world. 7 ninths or, in fraction form, like that. A lot of times, work with fractions boils down to, you know, do this, do that, cancel, get a common denominator, all that kind of stuff. All these procedures kind of get mixed up in our heads. And yet, at the end of the day, there should never be a question about a problem like this. Two, if I have two oranges and I add five oranges, I get seven oranges. If I have two ninths and I add five ninths, I get seven ninths, right? Now, it may boil down to this. Well, if the bottoms are the same, add the tops, but it shouldn't. If you're relying on something like that, what that means is that you don't really understand what the fraction means in the first place. You should easily be able to say two ninths plus five ninths, seven ninths. In other words, adding two fractions that have the same denominator should be easy. And it should make sense. It means, oh, you know, I, I cut up, you know, something into the same number of equal sliced, sized pieces, and I have a certain number of this size piece and a certain number of the same size piece over here, and when I add them together, I have this many ninths in this case. So let's move on and keep working with this idea of adding fractions that have the same denominators. Exercise number two. Find the sum or difference of the fractions below that have common denominators. Write your final answers in simplest form. Change all improper fractions into mixed numbers. So first, let's make sure that we understand this term because we see it a lot when we work with fractions. Common denominators, right? Common means the same. Maybe it would have been e better to call them equal denominators or the same denominators. But in math, we decided to call them common denominators. Just like we have common multiples and common factors, common denominators just mean the same. And it's so easy to write 
the sum or difference of two fractions that have the same denominators, because we're just keeping track of how many things we have. Letter A, I have 5 twelfths plus 1 twelfth, well, I must have 6 twelfths, right? 5 twelfths plus 1 twelfth must be 6 twelfths, right? 5 apples plus 1 apple is 6 apples, certainly 5 twelfths plus 1 twelfth is 6 twelfths. Now that's not simplest form, because 6 and 12 can both be divided by 6, so I can simplify this fraction whoops, by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 6, perhaps, and I get the more common fraction, 1 half. But it really is truly that simple, right? If I've got 3 fourths plus 9 fourths, then I have 12 fourths. If I have 3 apples plus 9 apples, I have 12 apples. So I get 12 fourths. Now keep in mind, right, that we've already looked at the fact that fractions and division are the same thing, so 12 fourths is the same as 12 divided by 4, and that's equal just simply to the number 3. All right, so subtraction works exactly the same way. What I'd like you to do is work on letters C, D, and E, all right? Pause the video, take a few minutes to do this, then we'll come back, we'll go through all of them, and make sure you understand the idea. All right, let's do it. Letter C, simple enough. 11 six plus 3 six, right? 11 six plus 3 six will simply be 14 six. Now, there's a bunch of simplifying we actually have to do here. The addition was the, the easy part. Um, I probably would want to divide the numerator and denominator by 2. That would give me 7 thirds. And then I would like to convert 7 thirds into a mixed number. 3 goes into 7 two times. That leaves us with a remainder of 1. So we would just get 2 and 1 third. All right. Let's take a look at a subtraction problem. Same thing. We have 19 twentieths minus 4 twentieths. Well, that's going to give me 15 twentieths. If I had 19 oranges minus 4 oranges, I'd have 15 oranges. Here I've got 15 twentieths. This fraction, though, can be simplified because we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So our final answer is 3 fourths. Now the last problem is probably the hardest one only because we have to do the most work, right? What we want to do is according to order of operations, we want to first do this addition, then this subtraction, and then we want to subtract the overall results. Now keep in mind, we don't want to simplify anything until we're absolutely done because we want to keep those denominators the same. Easy enough, right? 5 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths is 14 sixteenths minus 11 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths is 8 sixteenths, right? So now 14 sixteenths minus 8 sixteenths is 6 sixteenths. And we could divide both numerator and the denominator of that fraction by 2, giving us 3 eighths. All right. So hopefully, the idea of adding or subtracting two fractions that have the same denominators is a simple, simple idea. The real problem becomes, of course, when we try to add or subtract two fractions that have unlike denominators. So let's get into that a little bit. All right, adding fractions or subtracting fractions with different denominators. Let's take a look at exercise number three. In the diagram below, one half of a rectangle and one-third of a rectangle have been shaded. When added together, what fraction of a single rectangle has been shaded? Justify your work mo by modifying the pictures so that you have fractions with common denominators. All right, again, let's talk about all sorts of terminology. If I just look at one-half plus one-third, it's not nearly as easy as the problems I was just doing because I'm literally almost trying to add apples and oranges. I've got one of these half things and I've got one of these third things, and when I get it, put them together, what do I have? What we need to do is write equivalent fractions for these two things that have the same number on the bottom called a common denominator. 
And what I'm really trying to look for is I'm trying to look for the least common denominator I can get. Now remember, I can change a fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom by any number I want, any number I want at all. Right? So if I want to make one half and one third have the same number in the bottom, what should that number be? And it's got to be a common multiple of two and three. Think about that for a minute. What number do I want to have in the bottom of both of those fractions? Well, the easiest one to get, and there's a lot of them that would work, but the smallest one that would work, the least common denominator, is the number six. Now I can do that by taking the fraction one half and multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by three, and that would be three six. Now visually speaking, right, what that would look like is it would look like that, right? Three six. Now the number one third, I could make that have a denominator of six by multiplying the numerator and denominator by two and that would give me two sixths, right? And that would look something like this. Now again, I, I really wanna kind of visualize this. See, what's brilliant about this is that now these two rectangles have been cut up into the same number of pieces. Both have been cut up into six pieces. The difference now here is that I've got three out of the six pieces, fraction of three sixths. Here I've got two out of the six pieces, a fraction of two sixths. So one half plus one third, which is the same as three sixths plus two sixths, is equal to five sixths. And of course it is. Here they are, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five sixths, right? But the only way we could do that was by first getting a common denominator for both of the fractions by finding a common multiple. And side note, we could have had multiples of 12, 18, all sorts of different common multiples of two and three. But the smallest one was six. Now there's one little small extra problem on this one, it's down here, right? If the two shaded portions of the rectangle were added together on one picture, what fraction of a total rectangle would be unshaded? Think about this for a moment. What portion of the rectangle would be unshaded? Well, hopefully, hopefully you can say, well, if five sixths were shaded, the portion that would be unshaded would be the one sixth that's left. I mean, think about it. If I took these two shaded portions and I moved them up here, then what I've got left that's unshaded would be one out of those six, one sixth. All right, let's work a little bit more with adding some fractions that have unlike denominators in the last problem. All right, getting common denominators. Now look, it's, it all boils down to this, okay? You can think about common multiples, you can do all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, what I have to do is I have to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by some number and multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction typically by a different number. Right? And I'm gonna do that so that I get the same number on the bottom. Now, that means that whatever the number on the bottom is, is going to be a multiple of both eight and six. So let's take a look at exercise number four. Consider the sum three eighths plus one sixth. Both 48 and 24 are common multiples of eight and six and can serve as the common denominator in the sum. Letter A asks us to convert both fractions so that they have common denominators of 48, find their sum, and then simplify our solution. So let's do this together. Let's make them both have denominators of 48, all right? Well, that's pretty easy, right? So for 3 eighths, okay, I can multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by six, and I'll get 18 48ths, all right? For 1 sixth, I can multiply the top and the bottom by eight, and I would get eight 48 eighths. So adding these together, right, will give me 26 48 eighths, and that's the sum of 3 eighths and 1 sixth. Now, it's not in simplest form, but 26 48 eighths is what we get when we add 3 eighths and 1 sixth. If we want it in its simplest form, that's when we have to look at these two numbers and go, ah, is there any common factor of the two? And there is. Both two, two is a factor of both 26 and 48. 
So if I then divide by 2 in both of these cases, I get 13 24ths, right? Now, now, 48 is not the only common denominator I could have had. In letter B, we're asked to convert both fractions so that they have the denominator of 24. That's actually their least common multiple. Find their sum, compare it to your answer in A. All right, so what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and convert both of these two fractions so they have a denominator of 24 instead of 48, and then add them together and see what you get. All right, let's do it. Well, 3 eighths, 3 eighths to get a denominator of 24, I would multiply the top and the bottom by 3, and that would give me 9 24 ths. Whoops. And then my 1 6 to get a denominator of 24 there, I would multiply the top and the bottom by 4, and that would give me 4 24 ths. And then when I add these together, I'll get 13 24 ths. And notice that is exactly what we got here. So when we add two fractions together, the moral of the story is it's easiest if we can find the smallest common denominator, which happens to be the least common multiple of the two denominators. In this case, the least common multiple of 8 and 6 is 24. That is the best common denominator to have because it will then involve the least amount of simplification at the end. On the other hand, we could find any common denominator we want, and one thing that will always work is if you multiply the two denominators together, but that can often leave me with a much larger denominator that I then have to simplify at the end. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. You've been adding fractions now for a few years, so all of this should be review. At the end of the day, though, this lesson, I wanted you to understand the fundamental notion of adding fractions and subtracting fractions that have the same denominator on the bottom, and why that should make all the sense in the world that if you add 3 sevenths to 2 sevenths, you get 5 sevenths. On the other hand, if you had 3 sevenths plus 2 thirds, that's a whole different beast because those denominators aren't the same, right? And therefore, it's not as easy to add them. Then again, we can always form equivalent fractions so that the two fractions have the same denominator, known as a common denominator, and then adding or subtracting them is relatively easy. Thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.